I'm Lance Pillersdorf, the CEO of Advertising Weekend. It's a great pleasure to be here. And this, for me personally, is a little bit of all worlds colliding. Uh, I am a proud uh, University of Wisconsin alum, so we've got a lot of Badgers in the house. And at Advertising Week, we really focus on, you know, what's next and how can we bring the audience, you know, the education and insights of the things that they need to know, what's happening in the world of marketing, technology, culture, and sports. So we've put together a, a great, you know, program today all about the new landscape of college sports and the name, image, and likeness and all of the things that have happened over the last you know, year and a half in, in changing everything. And, and we have a, a great two hour block that we're gonna hear from the universities and the University of Wisconsin in particular. We're gonna hear from some student athletes. We're gonna hear from former student athletes and former NFL players. We have agents, we have the media, we have brands like the chief marketing officer of Mountain Dew, Pat O'Toole and then agencies and you know gen z uh experts from our friends at 98 strong so uh without further ado we're going to kick things off with the deputy athletic director mitchell pinta from the university of wisconsin mitchell you want to talk about yourself for a second <laughs> thank you appreciate you having me here uh my name is mitchell pinta i'm the deputy athletic director at uw madison um, i'm relatively new in my role i started uh just last february and I oversee all external uh, parts of our organization. So everything from development and fundraising, ticket sales, marketing, fan engagement, um, that all falls under my umbrella. Prior to uh, going to UW, um, I was a, spent 15 years at the National Football League uh, in business development, partnership marketing, and, and strategy roles. And prior to that, I was a student at the University of Wisconsin. So it's a little bit of a, a coming home for me. So excited to be here. That's great. That's great. Thank, thank you for being here. Uh, we have a you know, big homecoming weekend this weekend, so I appreciate you uh, taking the time. So, you know, with all that's changed in the, uh, in, in the college sports world, you know, from the uh, NIL and the transfer portal and, you know, the, media, new, the new media deals, how are you, uh, how are you adapting to those changes? Hey, the, my first day, actually, my first day of work at Wisconsin was for those Badgers in the house, uh, was our basketball game versus Michigan with the little kerfuffle between uh, Coach Guard and Coach Howard. So that was kind of just set the tone for everything that was, that was happening. I walked into um, just a dynamic time in college athletics between, you know, you, you listed them all, but uh, NIL and the transfer portal, um, the, the settlement of the Alston case and, and everything that goes along with that. Um, but it's an exciting time. Uh, I always say to, to my team members and, and people I've worked with that I wouldn't have want to make the move from pro sports to college sports if this was five or seven years ago when it was the status quo. I think everything that's going on um, right now in college sports, we, we have a chance to really set the stage for what the future is going to be. Um, and especially for us at University of Wisconsin, how do we make sure that we're balancing everything going on between NIL and all these different things, but still make sure we're staying core to our mission, which is people and our student athletes getting a degree from a world-class institution and, and balancing all of that. And, and you think you know, your NFL experience has really helped in, in, in this world that we're in now? I, I think so, I hope so. Uh, you know, a lot of it from where I sit within the athletic department is we are scratching and clawing and fighting for every dollar. Um, just again, from, from the university's standpoint, we have a, we're about to embark on a $300 million practice facility. Um, everything going on with the, the launch of our NIL, our UW program that we have in-house, the Varsity Collective, um, the, just the overall macro trends that you see in, in, in ticket sales and just uh, the event industry as a whole, that's not something that we're immune to either. So making sure that we're providing value to our student athletes, we're providing value to our alumni, providing value to our fans. That's something that uh, I, I like to think I learned from the best of the best at the NFL and trying to apply as much as that as possible at Wisconsin. So it seems it's a little bit of a, a, a wild west out there in the world of uh, NIL. Uh, how is Wisconsin, you know, staying, you know, compliant and, you know, who's really uh, regulating it? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head with the wild, wild west. Um, you know, I can't speak for, for other universities or other institutions. Uh, it's been really important to us, to our administration, to our athletic director, 
that we're staying true to who we are and doing it the right way and doing it the Wisconsin way. Um, you know, when you look at the Varsity Collective, which I know we have a panel up here and, and they're gonna talk, I think the, the real benefit of, of that group is that that was started by a bunch of alumni who, alumni and donors who care about our university and care about doing it the right way. There's a lot of stories out there of uh, collectives that got launched and folded or maybe some of them are a little bit shady under the table. We are fully embracing the NIL opportunity and what it means for our student athletes. And we are really, really grateful and blessed that we have a bunch of supporters who want to do it the right way. And it's truly complimentary to everything that we do in our athletic department. You know, we look at NIL as just another pillar from you know, athletic performance and academic achievement. Um, this is a, a piece of financial advancement. And whether it's, uh, you know, the Alston case and being able to, um, to, to benefit off of getting your degree to making money off your name, image, and likeness, these are life skills that you're gonna carry with you throughout, throughout your entire, your four years at Wisconsin and beyond. That's great, that's great. And what are some of the, uh, the deals that, you know, and, and partnerships that some of the Wisconsin student athletes have done that have stood out to you? Yeah, the, uh, you know, Pat uh, from, from Mountain Dew is sitting here. The obvious one for us and for the Badgers, you know, in the room is Johnny Davis. You know, Johnny was a, a you know, perfect example of someone who, who came to our university, um, you know, top 10 NBA draft pick. He's able to, to leverage a really, really successful partnership with PepsiCo and Mountain Dew, and he's, you know, plastered all over um, downtown Madison. Um, able to leverage that into a national campaign with Taco Bell. So, you know, that's the, the, the easy one that obviously really jumps out at you. And, and one, I don't want to lose sight of, but he is the 0.001% the of our student athletes. We have 800 student athletes, and there's so many great stories of people who are not going to go pro after they leave Wisconsin. Um, I look at someone like Danielle Hart, who's a student athlete on our volleyball team, who's really, really passionate about art. So she launched her own company, sells her own art. That's something that she couldn't have done prior to July 1 of last year. So for her to be able to leverage that and, and create her own business. Um, Chris Vogt was a, walk, or, uh, was a transfer on our basketball team last year. So that's a guy who didn't have a whole lot of, uh, you know, built up equity in the marketplace. His hometown in Mayfield, Kentucky got ravaged by tornadoes and he was able to raise over $50,000 for his hometown. Again, these are things that People wouldn't have been able to, student athletes wouldn't be able to do prior to uh, the changing of the NIL rules. So it's those stories and there's, you know, countless student athletes. I think we have, have a student athlete on almost every single one of our 23 sports who's taken advantage of NIL. So it's been really good and impacted all of our student athletes positively. Now you hit it on the head. The entrepreneur story, I think, is really a great way for these, you know, for the you know, as the 2%, the you know, as, our, as, as the 98 Strong Group talks about, that are really building their careers, you know, outside of sports and, you know, in the advertising and media industry. And, you know, uh, so, you know, that's a really important piece of it. So the last question before we get into the collective is, what's gonna happen next? I mean, it's been a crazy, you know, year and a half. <laughs> what now? <laughs> I think anyone who sits up here, uh, at least I can only speak for the college sports landscape, who tells you that they know what's going to happen next is lying to you. Um, I think for us, as we want to control what we control, um, again, we are blessed to be uh, tied to a world-class institution and making sure that we at Wisconsin are leaning into that um, and playing the game that we know that we can win. And, and the Varsity Collective and a lot of the other things that we're doing um, back home in Madison, I think, are really set, up, set us up for success in the future. That's great. Thanks so much. And uh, just uh, just a, a quick note that after the session, the Varsity Collective is hosting some drinks upstairs on the uh, in the garden level. So uh, please make sure that everyone uh, comes to that afterwards and learns a little bit about the collective. And Mitchell, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Almost and, counts. Uh, go Badgers.